So, um, welcome. It's, it's wonderful to see you all here. We have some familiar faces and some new faces. And um, I, as Jean and I are often uh, fond of saying, there's no prerequisite for participating in the self-compassion practice group. There's only, only the need, the aspiration, um, the intention to just find uh, your own innate compassion, the compassion that is already within you, and then to direct that compassion, often that we direct to others in the world, but to direct that compassion back to ourselves, um, who are so deserving of that. And what I have found, of course, is that when we learn to do that, it actually radiates out into the world. So I just wanted to start with a, a quote from Brene Brown that came across my desk today. I thought it was a good one for a self-compassion uh, practice group. And it is, imperfections are not inadequacies. They are reminders that we are all in this together. <laughs> so I, I thought that was great. And it's really the first noble truth. It's that being born into this human body means that there's suffering, means that there's difficulty, means that things, you know, are just push and pull and, and are, are difficult. And so I love the practice of self-compassion to help us uh, with that reality of being human. And so it's such a gift to gather here together and to really, as she says, to remind ourselves that we're in this all together. So, um, it's lovely to have each one of you here and to have us gathered as a group. So, and one of the most delightful parts of this is the fact that I get to do it with Jean. So Jean, I wonder if there's any opening <clears throat> comments or anything you'd like to say in introduction. And then if you would be so kind as to lead us in sure. a settling yeah. meditation. Yeah, thank you. So I feel the same way about Jane. Jane and I have been doing this together for many years now. So. It's a delight to teach with someone else. Um, and both Jane and I have just ended a retreat. So we're, uh, if we seem a little spacey, <laughs> it's not your imagination, <laughs> but I think it's actually a great preparation for, for being together tonight. I wanted, I was, I was looking through papers that I have piled all over the place and I found some notes that I'd taken from a retreat that I did with Ajahn Suchito, who's, um, He's a Western monk in the Thai forest tradition, if that means anything to you, uh, who's been around for a long time. And um, he said a couple of things that I think are germane to our, our practice tonight. Um, so I just wanted to read, these are quotes from him. Let love supervise your practice. Be in loving relationship with whatever is arising in your body mind rather than trying to dominate or possess it. If what shows up as painful, unresolved stuff, instead of spinning out in it, see what the energy is like. Rest in the comfort of breathing, the uprightness of your posture, the goodness of your intention, and stay present with the uncomfortable. Awareness will do the rest. You don't have to figure anything out. Your head won't tell you how to come to terms with grief or fear or whatever else arises. Give it all the time it takes. Approach it like you would a revered master. So I think those are very wise words as to how to approach this practice of self-compassion, which for many people, especially me, um, was a stretch when I first started. I was um, much, it was much easier to be kind to others than to myself. So tonight we'll be um, exercising the muscle of being kind to ourselves. So um, we thought we would start with a, just a, a guided meditation to get ourselves in the room, so to speak, the virtual room and in our bodies. So I invite you to find a comfortable posture, whatever that is for you. If you want to close your eyes, you can do that, or you can leave your eyes gently open. 
If you're more comfortable with turning your video off during the meditation, then feel free or leave it on. It'd be nice if you can turn it on again afterwards. But whatever allows you to be most comfortable is, is the rule. So just taking a moment now to settle into a comfortable posture if that's available to you tonight. And beginning to draw your attention from the external world to your internal experience. Perhaps starting with just the experience of being embodied, of being a human being in a body. Feeling the weight of the body sitting. Feeling the contact with whatever you're sitting on. So just feeling the body sitting. And if the line wanders off to thoughts of the past or the future, just noticing with kindness and directly redirecting your attention back to the felt sense of the body. The body is like this. And taking a moment now, perhaps to reflect on an aspiration for this practice tonight. Perhaps the aspiration to be present with whatever arises in body and mind with an attitude of kindness. May I meet my experience with compassion. Or may I learn to treat myself as I would a friend Or maybe just the simple, may I choose kindness. As Ajahn Suchito said, let love supervise your practice. Be in loving relationship with whatever arises in the body mind. And acknowledging that this may not be your first response to what arises in body-mind, as it is for many of us, but nevertheless committing to the path of kindness, aligning with kindness, So holding this aspiration in your heart, tucking it away in your heart, and returning your attention now once again to the felt sense of the body. How do you know you have a body? Noticing sensations in the body. A 
especially any sensations of weight or solidity, hardness. solidity of the bones. This is the earth element in the body. The earth element in the body resting on the earth below. supported by the earth. Earth touching earth. And inviting the body and the mind to rest in this support Resting. Allowing. Nothing to fix or to change, to make different than it already is. Inviting an attitude of love and kindness. Allowing the body-mind to rest. And within the solidity, the weight of the body, the earthiness of the body, is the movement of the breath. So bringing into the foreground of your attention now the sensation of breathing. Feeling the breath as it comes into the body and the breath as it leaves the body. Not needing to make the breath be any different than it is. Just allowing the breath to be as it naturally is in this moment. Fast or slow, deep or shallow. The breath is like this. And just as we offered an invitation to the body to rest on the support of the earth, perhaps feeling the soothing rhythm of the breath as it nourishes the body on the in-breath and cleanses the body on the out-breath. Feeling the natural soothing rhythm, the nourishing movement of the breath within the stillness of the body. So 
So resting in the weight of the body, the stillness of the body. And within that stillness, feeling the soothing rhythm of the breath. This is the gift that's been given to us for as long as we're alive. The earthiness of the body, the soothing rhythmic nourishment of the breath. So taking a few moments now to just enjoy the knowledge of this, the knowing of this. We can know this. We can feel it. What a miracle. And just as we can know our internal experience, we can also know our external experience. We can be aware of the boundaries of the body and the mind. We can be aware of the space around us, the space in the room, wherever you are now, in the space between all of us in this community, not in the same physical space, but in the same practice space, the same spiritual space. So perhaps sensing into this space, the space that holds us now and the space that connects us All of us subject to both the joy and the sorrow of being human. Of living in a human body with a human mind. All of us exposed to so much that is out of our control, to so much suffering in the world. And calling to mind perhaps our aspiration at the beginning of this meditation, perhaps the aspiration to meet whatever arises with kindness, with love. perhaps committing to the practice of compassion to ourselves and by extension to others. So perhaps feeling the support of one another all of us here tonight, all of us who made the decision to show up, to be present, to be curious, to practice kindness. If 
feeling into the energy of that commitment to compassion. May we all be free from suffering. May we all know compassion. Just a little bit about what we'll do now is um, after Jean's lovely settling uh, meditation, um, I'll just plan to talk a little bit about the topic tonight about this relationship to our body as a as a way of practicing self compassion and and developing the body as uh, a refuge as a place for us to settle. Um, and then we'll have Jean will do some movement, which seems only right <laughs> since we're focusing on the body. And then we'll do a body scan. And what I hope is that through the process, that um, it, the lovely thing about this gathering is it's small. And so we can hear from each one of you. Um, I'll pause and, and ask for reflections, ideas. Uh, experiences as we go along. Um, so I really um, look forward to that. And as I said, um, even though we're recording, anything you say will be blocked out of the recording. It will not be recorded. Your confidentiality is completely um, uh, respected. So so as, as Jean said, we were just in a week-long retreat talking about just uh, opening our awareness. And this retreat started with um, grounding in the body as a place to start that sense of awareness or of our different ways of being in awareness. And um, for me, it was a really profound experience. And it makes me think about with the Buddha, you know, the four foundations of mindfulness, the first one is the body, you know. And from what I, I have heard is he spent a lot of time talking about um, establishing this uh, foundation of uh, mindfulness in the body. And oftentimes I, I think about, you know, our busy mind and our mind is going into the past and into the future and it's having these arguments and it's it's a little bit like a toddler, you know? And when a toddler really has got their attention on something, it really doesn't do well to try to pull it away from them or talk them out of it. It works really well to say, oh, look at that. And then the toddler goes, oh, look at that. <laughs> so in some ways, I actually think to work with the busy mind to move the attention to the body, because the mind can be a little bit like a toddler, <laughs> you know, it can be a little bit like, wow, and then we just go, oh, and rest in the body. And I remember somebody saying once that the body is always present. It's here, and it doesn't lie. <laughs> The mind likes to tell us lots of stories, but the body just reports. It just says, oh, this is here, and this is here. So um, it's it's been wonderful. But I have to tell you, um, it has not always been uh, a go-to for me. Uh, the more I work with this, I realize that um, because of events in my life, I left, I think I left my body. I just like, it's, it's bad things happen. <laughs> you know, or, or that's not comfortable. And I, I'm, I moved away from it. In fact, I remember, Jean, even years ago, you used to say to me, oh, we have to be in the body. The body is so important for practice. And I remember going, 
Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but not really knowing what that meant, um, what that really meant to nurture this relationship, this um, caring, and um, maybe even allowing the body to be a place of refuge. I, I really didn't know what that meant. When I grew up, um, the sensuality of the body was not, mm, 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 mm. the body was a workhorse. If it worked hard, that was good. Um, it was not something that you paid attention to. Um, and even as a young woman, the body created attention I didn't want. So it was very confusing. And then uh, as I'm aging, oh my gosh, you know, the body is doing all kinds of things it's not supposed to do. <laughs> and it hurts and it aches and it, and, uh, but you know, also, there's some things about my body that are really comfortable and comforting. Um, I experience it as pretty resilient, pretty strong. I do like the central aspects of the body. Um, and this body uh, bore two children, which I think is sort of a miracle. I was like, wow, that is pretty amazing. So I just want to invite each one of you to just take a moment. And if you like to close your eyes or just to just come back in and just notice what, what has been your relationship or what does your relationship to the body feel like right now? It's always whenever these practices we do, it's always so important to start wherever we are. So just to reflect, maybe there's ways that that relationship to your body has ease or appreciation, or maybe there's struggle or difficulty And maybe even you notice how the judging mind comes in, maybe comparing or wanting to fix the body. Maybe there's ways it's hard to just let yourself be with what is. So that you have been able to identify um, the emotion of fear. And it makes me think about um, what a rich place for the practice of compassion and how gently we need to be in relationship with the body. Um, you know, we're taught to be so grammy and so hard with the body. The whole culture does. And it just, I just hear the need for gentleness, for a, a compassion. So thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, I think that, that, that's a great thing about the practice is that we don't have to figure it out. We don't have to understand why we have fear. And we just have to offer ourselves kindness for the fact that we have it. That, that in itself is enough. Thanks for sharing what you shared. There may be something in the body that is, is difficult, but it's sort of the what happens in the relationship that sort of adds to um, that difficulty that we have. It's the mind's reaction to what might be happening. I think when, and, and then the mind does what it does in response to um, the body. So when we're working with the body, it's always really good to notice what, what's, what is the reaction? What is the piling on? What is the, maybe the grasping or the aversion that I don't like this? I don't want this. This isn't what I like. This isn't. And so how do we just come into this relationship 
where we aren't perhaps judging or wanting or comparing or fixing. We're just being with. That seems like that's, and also sort of where the practice of self-compassion can be so helpful because when we are with, oftentimes what arises is something that's difficult. And the self-compassion, as I've said so many times, I feel like it gives us this bigger vessel to hold whatever is happening. So I just think about the need to um, go slowly, appreciate that this journey is your own. You will go about it however makes sense for you. Um, and um, just to allow the body to tell you its wisdom of whatever it has. It might at first night sound like wisdom. <laughs> I don't like that, but it does. It, it really has something that it wants to support you. It wants to um, be in relationship in a way that's, that um, allows you to be present. So tonight, I'd like to just explore that a little bit with you all and um, to do that through a self-compassionate body scan. This is the body scan if you've taken the class that we do at the retreat. And um, uh, it's just an opportunity to sort of slow down and pay attention to different parts of the body. So. Um, with this, uh, I'm going to invite you, you can do it sitting up or you can do it lying down. So what I'd like to do is, uh, if Jean, if you would invite us first to do some movement, which is a really good way to come into the body. And then after Jean is done with movement, I'm going to invite you to find a position that feels comfortable for you to do the body scan. If you want to sit up, it's great. If you want to find a place to lay down, that's good too. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so we've been up in our heads a little bit, thinking about what Jane has shared with us and our own reactions. So let's take a moment now to see if we can, once again, drop down from these heads that are supported by the body and just notice what it feels like again to be sitting, if you're sitting. If you were to describe to somebody else the felt sense of sitting, you don't need to verbalize this, but think to yourself, what would I say? What is the sensation of sitting, of being in a body that's supported? Perhaps pressure with whatever you're making contact on, perhaps a sense of weight or something else entirely. What is a felt sense of sitting in a body? And then if you choose to, you can begin to make the transition from a sitting posture to a standing one. So again, seeing if you can keep as much attention as you possibly can in the felt sense of what it feels like to move from sitting to standing, as though you had to describe this to somebody. Let's say there's somebody that's never stood up. What would you say to them about what it feels like to stand? And if you're standing or if you're sitting, if you choose to stay sitting, then just taking a moment now to notice once again what it feels like to be in this posture. And if you're standing, you could just move a bit, just shifting your weight from one foot to the other. Or if you're sitting, you could just lift one foot and then lift the other. So just noticing what it feels like to be a little off balance and then come back through to balance and then again to the other side. The felt sense of shifting weight, of having a moving relationship to gravity. 
And then coming back to stillness on two feet. Perhaps feeling the pull of gravity on the body. And then beginning to just maybe go up and down a little bit on your feet. So a little bit of shaking. This is a great thing to do if you want to make sure you have strong bones as you go through life to just do a little up and down on the toes. Doesn't have to be a big movement. Shaking a little bit. Soft knees. And then adding some more to the shaking if you choose to. Nobody's watching you, so just letting it go. You can involve your arms and your hands and your head or whatever you want to do. So just shaking the body, noticing if there are places that are kind of cramped up and giving them a little movement. You could swing your arms up over your head or do what, just whatever you want. Reaching up to the ceiling if you choose to. Moving from side to side. Just discerning for yourself what your body seems to want tonight in terms of movement. Or if it's no movement, then just finding a still posture standing or sitting. And you could do a little walking in place, lifting one knee and then the other, lubricating the joints and the knees. We have a broken foot in the group, so being careful to not add more injury, whatever works for you. And then when you're ready, coming back to a position of stillness. Noticing whatever you notice in the body. For me, I'm noticing a little bit of energy. It feels like energy in my hands. Maybe you're noticing something similar or not. What is the body telling you now? And can you meet whatever you experience in the body, again, with kindness? Whether it's pleasant, unpleasant, or neither. This is how it is. And then if you've been standing, beginning to make your way to a seated posture or finding that posture that you think would be most beneficial to support the practice of the body scan. Noticing, again, all of what it takes to move this body through space, to sit or to lie down as though you were an explorer for the first time in this body. What are you noticing? How would you describe it to somebody else? Thank you, Jean. I really appreciate that you um, offer to us shaking the body. And oftentimes in the animal world, when an animal goes through a frightening experience or a traumatic experience, they'll shake themselves. And um, I have found that that is helpful as a mammal. <laughs> to shake and shake off. Oh, I just invite you to find a position that feels comfortable and to invite you to start wherever you are, to go gently and if for any reason that there's parts of exploring the body 
might be difficult or there might be trauma held in the body for you. To be just very gentle and if you should find yourself triggered or uncomfortable at any point, allow yourself to perhaps open your eyes or move or ground yourself in your surroundings. And if for any reason, any part of the body is really uncomfortable, I invite you to only touch it gently and then move away. Move to a part of the body that feels neutral. There is no way that we are pushing or striving or efforting in any way. We are merely just inviting ourselves to come into the body, relaxing, resting. We're softening into whatever is present. So I invite you to become comfortable, as comfortable as possible. And if at any time in this meditation you notice that you get sleepy, sleepy beyond the way that's helpful, you can raise your arms or you can move a bit or you can open your eyes. You can even stand up and do the meditation in that position. So we're bringing attention to the body. We're noticing the body either sitting or standing, the weight of the body, either on the chair or on the surface we're lying on. Perhaps just making note of the points of contact where you can feel the skin coming in contact with your clothes, the weight of gravity holding you to the earth. And as you gently turn your attention to the body, Imagine that you're simply inclining towards the body with a sense of curiosity, of acceptance, maybe even just tolerance, with kindness. Just allowing yourself to feel the body as a whole, perhaps imagining the skin that surrounds the body and holds it. We're bringing a warm hearted attention to the body. We're practicing being with the body in a kind and compassionate way. In the same type of relationship you would have with a beloved child or a pet that you loved or a dear friend. And as we do this body scan, I invite you to do whatever do helps you to become in contact with the body. You maybe want to move or to touch parts of your body. We're just practicing how to be with this body 
as it is right now. You're staying in touch with whatever you need from moment to moment. And when something that feels comfortable, you maybe just have appreciation. And when something feels uncomfortable, you perhaps respond with compassion. Just noticing the mind at any point, if it judges or compares or tries to fix, just notice and then invite yourself back to the felt sense of the body. So let's start with the toes. Just noticing if there's any sensation you can feel in the toes. Maybe are they dry or moist? warm, cool. You might even just wiggle them to see if you feel sensations. And then moving to the soles of the feet, seeing if you can, can detect any sensation on the surface of the soles of your feet. Just imagining this very small surface that actually holds up your entire body during the day. Just noticing if you can feel any sensations on the soles of the feet opening to whatever is present in a gentle and kind, curious way. And then moving your attention to the entire foot. So many tiny little bones and muscles such an intricate part of the body. And just allowing a kind and gentle attention to your feet as if you're wrapping them in a warm blanket. And then gradually Moving your attention up your leg, one part at a time. You're noticing your ankles and then your shins. Moving up to your knees. Oftentimes our knees are such intricate joints. They can be grumpy sometimes maybe even offering your knees a slight massage, moving up into the thighs, feeling the strength of the thighs. Just feeling the bone and the flesh and the skin of the legs. the strength of the legs. And if at any point you notice your mind has wandered, just again return, return just simply to the felt sense of this part of your body. 
noticing whatever sensations are present And you may even choose to offer a kind statement such as, may this part of my body be at ease. And may this part of my body be at ease. Just letting this process be exploratory, curious, gentle. And then moving your attention to the pelvic area. Again, the strong bones and the fleshy part of the pelvic area. Feeling your buttocks on the floor or the chair. Feeling the large muscles that support your body. And also the soft tissue in the pelvic area of your body. And then moving your attention into the lower back. For many of us, this can be a place that we carry stress. There may be tension or tightness. And just imagine you can allow those muscles to melt and to soften. Feeling the lower back on either the back of a chair, if you're leaning on a chair, or on the surface you're lying on. And then shift your attention, moving up the back of the body maybe even imagining the spine and the muscles of the back that hold you upright all the way to the shoulder blades. Just feeling the strength of the back body. And if there's any tension, just noticing it. and offering it a sense of tenderness, of care. And then moving the attention to the front of the body, to the chest and the heart center and the belly. the chest, the center of the breath, and the heart, where we feel so much in the belly. It's just such a tender and active part of the body. Allowing yourself to feel whatever you feel in this part of the body, inclining with the quality of warmth and tenderness. In the same way you would incline towards a young child. And perhaps even if you'd like to, you could put a hand or both hands on the chest. Perhaps just feel the life of the breath moving in and out of your chest and your belly. Perhaps feeling the heart beat.
connecting to this very alive and tender part of your body. And then bringing your attention to your shoulders, feeling the upper arms. And again, if you notice that there's any tension that you don't need, you can just release it. And then bringing your attention from the upper arms down the arms to the elbows and the lower arms, down to the wrists and the hands, maybe even just moving the wrists or the fingers, offering a small massage if you like. Perhaps even just savoring the sensation of the hands that are so uniquely designed to hold things and to handle objects and are so sensitive to touch. And then you can proceed offering your attention to your head and your neck, beginning with your neck, maybe even just moving the neck slightly, or even offering a small massage to the neck. The neck does so much. It holds this head up. It's the conduit for blood and breath. And maybe we maybe even offer appreciation or even a kind compassion for all that our neck does, knowing that there is no need to fix it or change it or have it be different. We're just offering our body a kind awareness a loving awareness, building that relationship. And then you can move to the head and up the back of the head, appreciating the skull that protects your brain. And then bringing your attention to the sense receptors, to your ears and your eyes and your lips and your mouth, your nose. These parts of your body so magically bringing you into contact with the world around you in such complex ways. And then bringing your attention to the muscles in the face, perhaps in your cheeks and your jaw, 
how these muscles allow you to eat and to talk and express yourself. And if you notice any tension or tightness in the muscles in the face, you can just allow them to soften. Perhaps even just offering yourself a small smile if it feels comfortable for you. As we smile, it releases chemicals into the body. It's a small smile for all that your body does. And then finally, your brain, this very magical part of the brain that is busy 24-7. Even while you sleep, it rejuvenates itself. Now I invite you again to bring back the attention the awareness of the body as a whole. Just coming back to that kind and tender relationship. Just allowing yourself to feel whatever you feel. It might be numb or alive. There may be pleasant or unpleasant. Just allowing yourself to take in whatever is present at this moment with a kind and a compassionate appreciation. And then just for a moment, thank the body and thank yourself for taking this time to engage in this very important relationship. And as you hear the sound of the bell, you can slowly and gently come back to the group, turning on your camera. So much to learn just by paying attention to the body. And I was looking for the quote from the, the book, you're probably familiar with this, but he was responding, I think, to some guy who had been trying to walk around the entire earth or something. And the, and the Buddha said, I declare that it is in this fathom length long carcass with its perceptions and thoughts that there is the world, the origin of the world, the cessation of the world, and the path leading to the cessation of the suffering. So everything we need to know about how we relate to suffering into our lives can be learned through just by just paying attention to the body. And also to say, I, I think I had not listened to the body for so, so long. I say, hello, are you there? No. <laughs> <laughs> so, so if you have that experience, that's okay too. That's okay too. Um, uh, it, it, it just, there's wisdom in whatever arises. Did the Buddha call it a carcass? <laughs> yes, a, this fathom long carcass <laughs> puts it in perspective. <laughs> it's where we're all going, right? <laughs> no other way out. <laughs> Anything else that anyone would like to 
and Halloween is coming up. Isn't it so bizarre? I, I seeing the skeletons out, you know, and how we respond to that. But it, it, it kind of it's kind of like meditating in a in a charnel ground. It's like, oh, kind of takes you back when you see those tombstones on your neighbor's lawn. So we have a wonderful opportunity to practice with that coming up soon. So good. So I have just a a, a quick announcement and then uh, and a poem. If we have time, uh, that I love. Um, uh, Jean and I will be teaching a six-week six course on Zoom on Tuesday afternoons from 1 to 3 o'clock. And it's going to start on November 2nd. And there will be a, a Saturday afternoon retreat as part of that on December 4th. And you can register on the uh, Common Ground website you can go under where it says current programs courses and workshops and um, uh, if you've been with us before you're invited again and if you're new we'd love to have you so so i've just got a quick um uh poem and then if jean would you do the sharing of the merit um this is uh from that book the first three women which is the poems of the early Buddhist nuns. And I really sort of uh, resonated, er, res resonated uh, felt in kin with this when I have tried to do this practice of relationship with the body. And I, I wanted to share it with you. It's called Vijaya or Victor. When everyone else was meditating, I'd be outside circling the hall. Finally, I went to confess. I'm hopeless, I said. The elder nun just smiled. Just keep going, she said. Nothing stays in orbit forever. If this circling is all you have, why not make this circling your home? I did as she told me and went on circling the hall. If you find yourself partly in and partly out. If you find yourself drawn to this path and also drawing away, I can assure you, you're in good company. Just keep going. Sometimes the most direct path isn't a straight line. Jean, would you be willing yeah, to? Yeah, so, so I'm, feeling, I'm feeling the urge to hug myself. <laughs> so if you want to do that, you can just give yourself a big hug, just in recognition of an appreciation for the fact that you showed up tonight. Yeah. Feel so good. You don't have to wait around for somebody else to do it. So just appreciating the goodness of our having come tonight on a Friday night in the fall to be together to practice self-compassion. So appreciating that goodness and recognizing that we do this not only for our own benefit, but for the benefit of the world, for all the other bodies in the world, for the beings that are seen and unseen, beings with two legs and four legs and many legs, many more legs and no legs, beings that fly and beings that swim and for Mother Earth. May all beings everywhere and for this planet that we all inhabit, may all beings in Mother Earth be free from suffering. May all beings everywhere know compassion. Thank you for coming. Thank you for your teaching, Jane. Thank you all for being here. It was a lovely delight to be with each one of you.